Hello, hello. I'm Annie. I'm filming in a slightly different location today. I'm in the same building that I normally film in, but I'm actually sitting on my massage therapy table. When everything went sideways in the pandemic, I decided to move my massage therapy practice closer to home. I live next door with my partner. I have an art studio here in this building where I make creations for my Etsy store. And I decided to move my massage therapy practice here to save money because the economy is weird right now. And there's also a virus risk. So I'm seeing less clients than I normally would. I'm seeing about three to five clients per week, only one per day. That is partially to limit coronavirus risk to myself and to my family and to my clients. But it's also because I'm really busy because sales have really, really picked up in Etsy. I had an Etsy store prior to the pandemic. And then when I started selling masks, I made a decent amount of money from selling masks and I continue to make money, but it also boosted sales of the other items that I have in my shop. So that pulls in a fair amount of money and keeps me really busy. And I also started seeing coaching clients, which was totally random. Just like a handful of people asked me if they could have talking sessions with me. And so I do that too. <laughs> And that's kind of a surprise to me, but I like it. It's actually something I had considered doing before. I just wasn't really putting myself out there. I've worked with a couple of other massage therapists who were just needing someone to talk to about making decisions about their business in relation to the pandemic. A lot of difficult decisions to be made for small business owners. I've talked to people who are transitioning from working for other people to being self-employed. I've been self-employed for well over 15 years now, I think close to 20 years. And it's not that easy. <laughs> Everyone thinks of self-employed as, you know, being like such a free thing, so much freedom, but it actually requires so much discipline and organization. And so I've worked with a few clients to help talk them through some of those issues. So that's been, you know, unexpected. What I really want to talk about today is I saw this meme on Facebook. Let me look it up. So I'll insert a picture of it here. So you can see the graphic. It says, be careful who you help. So I find this a little baffling. It's just a dilemma that's really foreign to me. And I guess it's like a decider versus observer dilemma. I honestly have never encountered this. I, I was like searching my brain and I couldn't think of ever encountering this issue. Do you really think that people are out to get you? I'm not aware of ever being targeted by an individual who is out to get me in this way. Really? And I think it's just a decider versus observer perception of reality because I don't have these kinds of relationships with people or the perception that anyone is out to get me or that the world is competitive and cutthroat. Like there's not like another massage therapist that's, you know, trying to like out massage me or anything like that. The only thing that I could think of honestly is um, I do online scheduling. And I remember like three years ago, there was a woman who kept booking a two hour session on a Friday, which is a really prime spot, like Friday five to seven, you know, right after work on a Friday, you could cancel 24 hours in advance and she would wait until like 23 hours before and she would cancel. And she did this like five Fridays in a row. And I really just like give people the benefit of the doubt. So I just thought like, oh, she's really busy. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe she's like the mayor or some city official. And she's just like, has a lot of responsibilities and Surely she isn't irresponsible or disorganized or just a jerk. You know, she just, um, she just has a more chaotic life than me. And so I forgive her for booking these two hour sessions in prime appointment times and canceling over and over again. But you know, after four or five times, I, I just blocked her. I was like, no, it's not okay to book a two hour slot and then cancel 23 hours before because I couldn't fill the spot. It just made me think like, well, maybe, maybe this is a sociopath or something. Uh, maybe this person is just like messing with me. And I tend to not think that about people. I don't really think that people are out to get me or people are competing with me or my mind just doesn't go there. I have other issues. <laughs> 
I think other batshit crazy things like uh, earlier today, what was it? Oh, I was so pissed off. <laughs> I was like spitting and cussing because I ordered these three paper trays from Amazon and I'm very careful in like reading the dimensions. Like I read the dimensions they needed to fit in a certain space. And so I took out my tape measure and I cross-referenced and I was like, yes, the dimension of this thing will fit into the physical space where I need it to fit. And I ordered it and I put one together and I was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And then I went to put it in the spot. It's totally not the dimensions that were listed. And that to me is like unforgivable. I mean, I sell things online too and I triple check the listing and the dimensions. It is absolutely not okay, unacceptable <laughs> to list the wrong dimensions. Like someone is buying a physical item to put it into a physical space. This is such a waste of time and money. I have to send this back now. I have to do the return label and maybe even pay shipping to return it back. I don't know, because I haven't like initiated the return yet. This all just happened today. <sighs> It really pisses me off. But, you know, I don't have these feelings about other people. I don't think that anyone else is out to get me. Like Sally or George or Rebecca <laughs> is not out to get me or make my life hell or cause problems for me or co compete with me in my career. Or I think some people have this as a recurring issue. And the only thing that I can think of is that they're perceiving it that way. They're perceiving that people are out to get them. And maybe I'm somehow just perceiving and noticing all these observer issues. Like human error is a thing that happens, but the number of times that people drop the ball, that they're just like not double checking the listing, they're not following their proper procedure. They're not checking their SI. I'm over it. I'm so over it. Like there is a margin of human error, but the amount that people, I'm trying not to cuss, the amount that people fork shit up, what, oh God, I just did it. I just, I was trying not to cuss and then I cussed. <laughs> I said fork instead of fuck, but then I still said shit. <laughs> oh my God. You know what I mean? The amount that people mess things up is more than like the reasonable margin of human error. And I think it's because they just don't care. So, I mean, I run my own business. I'm not working for anyone else. So when I create a listing for an item, it's on me. There's no one above me. It's not like this is my boss's business and I don't care. It's my business. I do care. I triple check the listing. I get the dimensions right so that if somebody orders something from me, they know what they're getting and all the specs check out. Anyway, <laughs> so you can see. I'm totally batshit crazy when it comes to observer issues, but I don't have these interpersonal issues. I don't think anyone's out to get me. I don't think that people are out to steal my job or compete with me in any way. But, you know, I have thought about it. I've been a massage therapist for 15 years. I have seen hundreds of clients, hundreds. And, you know, just by the law of statistics, some of those people were probably sociopaths. So statistically, probably some of them were. And the instance that I told you about when the client was booking many, many times, I never met this person. Like this was a stranger who was booking on my calendar over and over again, week after week, and then just kind of like messing with me. Uh, I don't know who that was. But I've had one other client who was a returning client that just the way she behaved, I just sort of felt like she was maybe a sociopath. I mean, it happens. Anyway, what do you think about that meme? <laughs> I thought it was really interesting. I see these things and it just makes me think like, oh my God, like, how do you get yourself into this mess? Like, where do you meet these people? Where do you meet these terrible people that are messing with you all the time? But then you know, 10 times a day, I have just as many observer freakouts where I'm pissed off at a manufacturer for writing the specs wrong or pissed off at my computer for updating again. Like I just bought the iPad and I already have to update it. And then like a week later, there's another update. Are you kidding me? How is there an update every week? And do updates really equal improvements? I don't know. So anyway, that's my crazy of the day. <laughs> okay, that's all I've got.